Okay, welcome back to my new Python tutorial. First of all, I would like to apologize for my weak voice, but I just caught the flu and I hope that you will understand everything correctly what I'm explaining. Um, so in this video, I would like to explain how to uh, create loops in Python. So there are actually two types of loops available. One are for loops and one are while loops. And depending on yeah, which, which thing you are working on, you have to use either the one or the other. But I would like to start with the for loops because I'm using them more frequently. And also I think it's a little bit easier to understand how they actually work. So if you know C++, then you know the syntax there maybe uh, that you have to create a for loop by writing for int i equals zero, i smaller than any number and so on. And similar in Python, you can do can do the same actually. Yeah? But only the syntax is a little bit different. So what you can write, for example, is I created here this new Python file, loops.py. And we can write here, for example, for i. Uh, i is the name of the variable. We can also give any other name, but i is just the standard name as used by many uh, people. Uh, and then in range. Uh, and then we type in here an integer 10, for example. Uh, again, you can use any other one which you like. And also, you can you can play around with this and see how the outcome changes by changing something. And then we just put in this print command print i. And again, we have to make this indent similar to if conditions. So this is important that we define one single block here. And then the only thing which you have to do, of course, is to run the program. And you see now when it executes, we get 10 lines starting from zero going up to nine. So for i in range 10 means that you create 10 steps. And in every step, we print out the variable i, which is automatically incremented by one. Uh, from starting always from zero and going up to the highest number, which we put here inside the range command. But uh, the, this number is not included. It stops actually one before. And uh, yeah, this is the, I think the easiest loop that you can create in Python, but they are also, um, you can also extend this range command by uh, two more parameters. So if you, for example, write here two comma 10, and then you uh, execute your program, you see it doesn't start with zero, it starts with two and goes up to nine. So um, the highest number has not changed, but the lowest number is not zero anymore, it's two. Yeah? And there is also a third argument that you can insert, a third parameter actually. Um, so let's suppose we don't want to start at two, we want to start at four, we want to go up to 10, or maybe even up to 20, but in steps of two. Yeah? So now we, uh, run the program and now you see the lowest number is four, then six, eight. So the incrementation is not any more one, but two. This is the third command saying you can also insert three, for example, and then you will see it goes uh, from four and always increments by three up to 19. Yeah? And you see that uh, since the largest number 20 is not included, the it, it will stop at the next lowest one. So it would be in case of incrementation by fact value of two, it would stop at 18. And if you do it by three, it would be 19, but it will never insert the 20. So now we can extend this very simple program a little bit and insert uh, a few more things in order to maybe calculate the sum of all these uh, values, which are given out in each uh, step. So for that purpose, we create a new variable, which we maybe call sum and this we want to tell Python that this is an integer. So we define this as zero. And then we can write here, uh, maybe before or after the print command, or maybe we can even remove this print command completely. And we can write here sum equals sum plus i. Yeah, so what happens here is that in every step of our loop, uh, we add the value of i, which is printed out here to the sum, uh, to the sum variable. And at the end, when we print out this variable, maybe we can even give, um, we can write a small statement to this. So the total uh, sum is, and then we can, uh, we have to again, cast this uh, variable to a string, yeah, because, because this is uh, again an integer and we want to add it to a string. So this has to be converted to a string. And when we run now this, 
program, it's very easily showing here that the total sum is 69. Yeah? So you can easily cross check this with your calculator. This is correct. So now you have written your own uh, easy, simple program uh, to sum up values from or in between different values incremented by another value. Yeah, So just um, you can play also around with this and see what comes out. Yeah, if you understand that, you also already understand uh, most of the things which are important in case of loops. Yeah? So now I would like to explain a little bit more about further things that you can do with this. Yeah? So there are other statements which you might need to know. And one is the break statement and one is the um, a continue statement. But before that, uh, we go back to our previous loop that we have created. Maybe we go again from zero to 10. And um, here we just print out uh, the number i again. Uh, sorry, typing is sometimes a little bit difficult. For i in range 10, print i. And then there's also the possibility to insert an else statement similar to if conditions. Yeah? So this means if the loop is executed successfully, then uh, it should at the end uh, print out, for example, a message uh, loop successful. Uh, so if we run this, you see now it prints out all the values i and at the end the loop is successfully executed. So it sh shows here this uh, string loop successful. Now we can break the loop at any position. Yeah? So for example, if we insert an if condition here and we write if i equals, for example, 5, and then we can uh, insert here with an indent again, uh, the break statement and we run our program, you see now we go from 0 to 4 because if e i is equal 5, then it breaks the loop at this position and this print command is not executed anymore. The loop is just finishing and the loop also didn't end up successfully. So the this loop successful statement will not be given out. Yeah? This is the meaning of else. So this you can maybe also keep in mind. And another important statement, instead of break, you can also use continue, which has another meaning, as you will see now when you run the program. Then you see now, again, we go from 0 to 9, but the 5 is omitted. Because what happens here, uh, i is incremented by 1. So first you have 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4. Then if i is equal 5, continue means that it does not execute anything which comes below this statement, but it goes back to the first step of the loop and then continues there with 6, 7, 8, 9. So print is um, omitted, but the loop has successfully been executed, so our else statement is correct. If we now shift the print command to the top of our uh, for loop and we run this, then you see now 5 is included again because only what comes below continue is not executed, but is what is above, of course, is included. And uh, yeah, again, the loop has been um, executed successfully. Okay, another important thing which I want to explain is that similar to um, if conditions, you can also create nested loops. So we could write, for example, for i in range 10, and then we make this indent again and write here for j, yeah, just another variable name in range maybe five. And then we can write here uh, print and if we write it in such a way, i comma j, uh, then automatically uh, it, it will be displayed. Both both variables will be displayed, so we don't have to first convert this into a string. But now it will be, uh, directly be shown in the output. So now if we run our program, you will see that it starts with 0, 0, uh, because first the uh, i is equal to 0, j is also equal to 0. And then first the second loop is executed, of course, because the only when the second loop is finished, then the first one will be uh, will continue. So now j is equal to 1, j is equal to 2, and so on until we reach 4. And when 4 is passed, then again, we go back to the first one and start with 0 again for j, but i is then 1, and so on. And we go until the end where 9, 4 is reached. And this is the end of both loops. So in this case, uh, it's also a very simple thing. And it shows that in a very easy way, similar to C++, also other programming languages, you can create nested loops. Another interesting thing is, uh, in some cases, this might be necessary to know, is that you can also loop over strings. Yeah? 
Um, I have never done that uh, or I never needed this until now, but in some cases it's maybe nice to know that. So if you create a variable which is called vehicles maybe and you assign the string car to that very easily and you write here for and then again the variable name in this case maybe we call that letter in vehicles then print out letter in each step and if we do that then we see now we have three lines uh, C A R so we just looping over a string just means that in every step we get access to each character of that string and this in this case we just give out now so this is also very simple much more beneficial I think from my point of view is the fact that you can also loop over lists and this you can do much quicker than in other languages so instead of maybe defining a list then write for i in range uh, 10 and then or in, in range of the length of that and then uh, access every item of that list separately we can directly uh, loop over the uh, items of that list so we could write for example vehicles and then we can insert some maybe car bus truck just to check and then we can write for and then we call that variable maybe vehicle in vehicles but of course we can also as I said name it differently for vehicle in vehicles and then we want to print out vehicle in every uh, in every step and if we do that now we have three lines car bus track so it's also working very well we can also break uh, the for loop similar to what we have done at any condition so we can write here for example if a vehicle uh, sorry if vehicle equals bus then uh, break and when we execute that then you see only car is written out because uh, once it reached bus it breaks and then this print statement is not executed anymore so this works very similar to what we have learned before with integers okay i think this is everything what you have to know regarding for loops if you know this then it's easy to program any kind of program whatever you want but now we will talk about while loops uh, because they are also important in some cases so let's suppose we write while i smaller than for example five yeah then of course in, uh, in uh, contrast to for loops, we have to now define this variable i before. Python does not know about it. So we have to write here i equals zero. And then, for example, yeah, and then while i smaller five, print out i. And then also, if we would run this program, it will run until infinity, yeah, because i will never reach the value of five. So we also have to make sure that inside this while loop we increment i at any at, at a given position. Yeah. So um, we can write here either i equals i plus one, yeah, similar to the sum that we have done before, or the shorter way would be i plus equal one. So now we can run our program and similar to the for loop. So this is the same what we have done in the beginning of our tutorial basically by using a for loop. The same we have done now using a while loop. Um, and we run here from 0 to 4 which is also easily achievable and it shows that you can interchange in some cases for and while with each other without having any problem. You can also easily create while loops that run until infinity. Yeah? So um, in this case uh, we can write here while true so there is no condition in this and if we now run the program yeah, uh, you can see it again it doesn't stop because there's no condition which which stops it so we can interrupt this and we can insert now this condition here with a break statement again yeah so if you write here if i equals five um, then break and then we can run the program and again here it it works quite well here i would like to explain one important thing in addition yeah so it depends also where you put this condition and uh, the break statement or continue statement and also your incrementation just because um, and there you have to take care especially when you debug your program if we do it like this then we get the following output as we have seen before from zero to five because the incrementation of i happens below the break statement yeah and the print 
statement is above that. So if we now change the position and put i plus equal one uh, before that if condition or in front of that if condition and run the program, then again you go from zero to four. Yeah, because the incrementation happens before together with the print statement before the break statement happens. This is just for convenience to know that. And now similar to for loops, we can also insert an else statement here and we could write, for example, uh, again, print loop uh, successful and we run that and we will not see anything. The output is zero just because the loop, uh, the while uh, loop has not been executed successfully. There is a break statement. Break always means that uh, the else statement will be omitted. If we write it in another way, uh, as we have done it before, while I smaller five uh, and we run this, then you see uh, there's no break statement, although the meaning does not change, but there's no break st statement anymore. So now else is executed uh, and uh, it, Python goes into that scope and print loop successful uh, yeah, in, in the terminal. Yeah. So this is fine. I think this is everything what you really have to know about um, uh, for and while loops. Um, as I said, in some case, you can just interchange them without any problem. And you should, again, play around with that and see what you can do with this in order to yeah, get some further ideas. And uh, hopefully um, you can now write your own small programs with this. Huh? So in the next video, then I will go into functions and then maybe after that classes. So um, then after that, you really know everything. And then we will also maybe go through some examples, some small programs that you can write in Python with all the knowledge which you have gained already. And we will also go through various um, packages and I mean uh, um, uh, modules of Python and we will also try to understand the meaning of this. Okay, and with this I want to stop now my video. Thank you very much for uh, watching. I hope it was beneficial. You liked it. If you like it, please hit the like button. Please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far and hopefully see you soon back for the next video.